primary structure is also called the covalent structure of proteins and the primary structure refers to the amino acid sequence of its polypeptide chain there are thousands of proteins present in this nature all the proteins are different from each other so uh, how they are different from each other they are different from each other only on the basis of their amino acid sequence every protein has a unique amino acid sequence and if this amino sequence is changed the protein is entirely changed as you know in case of sickle cell only one amino acid change can change the structure of protein and in turn can make its function changed so if a particular sequence of protein is changed its structure is changed and its function is also changed so a protein function is due to its a specific structure and that specific structure of protein is mainly due to its amino acid sequence peptide bond is rigid and planar this was said by pauling and core linus pauling and robert core they carefully analyzed the peptide bond present in the protein molecules they also knew the importance of hydrogen bonding and other weak interactions which are present in the biomolecules and they made number of important conclusions actually their findings laid the foundation of our present understanding of protein structure they demonstrated that the peptide cn bond is somewhat shorter than a normal cn bond present in a simple amine here you can see in this picture this is peptide bond between c and n this peptide bond is covalent in nature but as they said this covalent bond is little shorter then normal cn bond present in other biomolecules as you uh, might be knowing uh, one cn bond is present in the dna structure in a nucleotide when ribose sugar is attached with amino group of a nitrogenous base so that is amine so if this bond is present between a simple amine this is a bit larger than the bond present between c and n in a protein molecule why this bond is shorter than normal bond here you can see this nitrogen this nitrogen uh, has a lone pair of electrons and this lone pair is shared with this oxygen how this lone pair is transferred to this bond and from here it is transferred to oxygen when this lone pair is transferred to oxygen its double bond is shifted from here to here and here you can see this bond becomes double while this co bond becomes single again when this lone pair goes back to carbon and then carbon to nitrogen this double bond will be shifted back to here like this so this peptide bond becomes single and c double bond o becomes double so in this way we can say that this peptide bond is resonance hybrid it is a partial double bond that's why it is shorter than the normal cn bond the second important finding of uh, pauling and core was that the six atoms of a peptide group they are coplanar it means these six atoms they lie in a single plane so uh, a polypeptide or a protein contains different peptide groups and each peptide group has six atoms so six atoms lie in a single plane 
the other six atoms lie in other in another plane the other six atoms and other peptide group lie in another uh, uh, plane so in this way these peptide groups are coplanar and the oxygen atom of the carbonyl group in this peptide group and the hydrogen atom of the amide nitrogen they are trans in position as we can see in this picture this is a peptide group this whole and it contains six atoms one two three four five and six this group containing six atom they lie in a single plane so another peptide group will also contain six atoms but the it will lie in another plane similarly here is another peptide group so they lie in a single plane and in this peptide group the co and nh they are always in trans configuration they can never be in a cis configuration this is not present in the protein molecules polling and core concluded that the peptide c n bonds are unable to rotate freely because of their partial double bond character single bonds can rotate but double bonds they cannot rotate and as you know peptide bond is partially double bond so it is a rigid bond and it cannot rotate if it cannot rotate then how different peptide groups they become angular to each other they lie at different angles how that means rotation is allowed on some other bonds and rotation is permitted about n alpha carbon linkage bond and alpha carbon and c bond so at these two bonds rotation is allowed while peptide bond which is between c and n that is rigid bond here you can see this is alpha carbon this black ball and this is n so this angle is between n and alpha carbon here rotation is allowed and this angle is called phi again this is alpha carbon and this one is carbon so at this bond rotation is also allowed and this rotation is called psi so as you have seen the rotations are allowed at c and alpha c and at a bond between n and alpha c so the bond angles resulting from from rotations at carbon atom are labeled as phi if this rotation is between n and alpha carbon and it is called psi if it this rotation is between alpha carbon and c bond in principle phi and psi can have any value between plus 180 and minus 180 so it is wide range any value can be adopted by a phi or psi but some values are still prohibited due to steric interference 